I believe that the background for this continuation in CML patients started with a suggestion by Professor John Goldman. So uh, after the observation that some uh, patients that underwent allogeneic stem cell transplants can live uh, with a small molecular residual disease but without overt relapse. So then with the, this, this suggestion was translated into uh, clinical practice with the first program of this continuation, so namely the STEAM-1 study by the French group, and then again translated into uh, clinical practice, uh, so the so-called treatment-free remission. So we now know that we can discontinue patients after uh, two years of stable and deep molecular response, so means MR4 or MR4.5, so undetectable according to the international scale. It's a safe procedure because very, very few patients have been described with progression. And uh, we know also that the relapse that was considered for um, the threshold for relapse is the, uh, the loss of a, a major molecular response. The period in which we see more relapses is the first six months. Uh, uh, usually is the most dangerous, so in fact is strongly recommended to monthly monitoring the molecular residual disease during this period. It's still a matter of discussion because, uh, the, for example, the NCCN guidelines suggested to a monthly monitoring for the first 12 months, but I believe that in clinical practice is also feasible the flowchart of monitoring of molecular residual disease suggested by the Euroski trial. So this big and huge um, uh, trial because enrolled more than 700 patients with CML that discontinued the treatment and uh, suggested to monthly monitoring only for the first six months, then every two for the rest of the first year, and then again every three months as always we, we perform during the, the routinely clinical practice. Recently, the Australian group suggested also that after uh, that we can um, perform a two-month monitoring from the start of this continuation, it seems also feasible and safe. Uh, until now, only two, so the median time of uh, duration of TKI treatment, so estimated being more than five years with the martinib, probably three years with second generation TKIs when started as a frontline treatment, and the median duration of a deep molecular response, so usually more than two years of stable, so without molecular fluctuation over time. Other factors such as age, for example, or the so-called risk at baseline was never confirmed by the uh, univariate analysis of the Euroski trial. So in our molecular lab, we tested another uh, tool for the molecular residual disease monitoring that it was called a digital droplet PCR. This is more sensitive uh, as compared to the quantitative uh, uh, RQ-PCR used uh, usually routinely in molecular monitoring because it uh, doesn't need a, a standardization curve. And uh, we retested 50 patients that are uh, at the level of undetectable MR4.5. And we found that 22 of them indeed were still positive for uh, molecular residual disease. So then we followed all these patients after the discontinuation. And of this positive cohort, uh, 11 relapsed soon after the median time of three months, as compared indeed only to four patients out of 28 that were uh, uh, negative with drop of digital PCR that relapsed after a median time of six months. So our conclusion is are that probably these methods are more sensitive and that predict the uh, successful outcome after the discontinuation so we can uh, stratify the patient according to the molecular residual disease that can attempt this type of strategy.